Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to EcoSY. Today we have a fun hero conversation where we're going to sitting down with a wonderful servant leader, Tim Woodson, who works at Century Equipment. So welcome, Tim. How you doing? Doing great. I hope you folks are. Yes, sir. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful day and, and looking forward to sitting down talking with you and just learning more about your journey and, and things that are going on at Century and just in your career in general. So we typically like to start these conversations, Tim, just by giving our listeners a little idea of your background and how you've got to, to where you're at now. Well, it's a long story, but I, I'll do my best. I was an entry-level employee that pretty much would do anything I was asked to do. I started working as an installer for about nine years, traveling from one job to the next, installing equipment that we install for other companies that manufacture conveyor systems. So we would work many, many hours, including day and night, on an average of 80 hours per week. In the late 1980s, the company started manufacturing conveyor systems, and I transferred into the work working as a welder. I worked as a welder for about a few years, and I became lead man of the welding shop eventually. After that, Pretty much went on and worked as a, got promoted to plant manager. I was a plant manager from 1996 until February of 2013 uh, when I become the leader of the company, uh, considered the president. I don't use that title lightly or I don't, I'm not above anybody, but uh, that's what they call me. So that's pretty much how I started. Okay. So is this entry-level position that you were working 80 hours a week, was that straight out of your high school into that type of role? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was 18 years old when I started. Now, where did you pick up your welding skills at? Well, throughout the install process, the supervisors that worked for the company, they would train me to do different things, and they would let me go to the side and pick up a piece of steel, and they'd say, you know, weld this together, let me look at it, let me see if it'll hold properly, and, you know, they just spent a lot of time with me, educating me and uh, giving me opportunities that that was really they they just took to me and as a friend and, and wanted me to do better and, and help me through that process, and I become actually one of the main welders within the company. It was only nine employees at that time, and um, I was the only welder for a while that I would travel from location to location after I got better at what I'd done and uh, weld platform, operator platforms, and structural steel supports for the equipment that we installed. Okay. Just for our listeners, I want to make sure they understand this. You know, we've had a lot of different guests, Tim, from straight out of high school, hands-on, in the field. You were, you were busting at 80 hours. You got that welder roll. Then you took the lead, the lead welder roll to the plant manager to now the president of the company, that's a journey, you know, worth looking back on and, and giving just just a, a, a nod. May, you've done some great things, and I hope our listeners can he, are hearing, no matter where you're at, if you put the right work ethic in, you know, and dedicate to it or, and then work with the right people, it sounds like you had a lot of great people over the past that have helped you also. Is it, would that be correct? That is exactly correct. They were veterans in the industry. Um, they they had worked at other locations within the area that that started actually manufacturing this kind of equipment and started their own business. So when they started, it was just a few key people that had had a lot of experience, and um, they seen something in me that I didn't know it was there, and and uh, educated me and gave me opportunity that just it's it's just a a, a blessing. That's that's a only way I can identify the all the opportunities that they gave me that I actually worked for, but right. they trained me and educated me and supported me. And it it wasn't easy as it sounds. Uh, it was a, many days of frustration and heartburn, but you know it's paid off. Right. And, uh, 
You know, you know, you just don't give up when things get tough and you know, it gets a lot of hard work and a lot of effort and day in and day out. And it's um, it, it becomes a little frustrating on occasions, but it's it's worth your while to you know just stay in there, hang in there, and work hard every day. You know. So, Tim, you, who you would know, get, who would be some of those mentors or people? You know, you mentioned that you had you had that network that helped you. Does anybody stand well, out that you'd like to give a recognition to? Yes, sir. It was actually the, uh, the we're Aesop Company now, but the owner uh, Adam Vanosky. Uh, you know, he was the owner, and you know, it was just a few of us. So we worked on project by project. So, you know, there there were many times that we. Uh, Worked together all day. We roomed together at night and week in and week out, you know, year in and year out. So we got to know each other pretty well. So, you know, he spent a lot of time with me, uh, Wayne Wells. He's uh, passed on now, but he actually was the guy that approached me about welding and helped me through that process. And then there was another gentleman that's passed on. His name was Junior Lambert. And um, they just... You know, they were the three of the top key people within the corporation, and they helped me throughout my career, and they pushed me to do more, to be more, and everything was had to be precise. You didn't do anything that wasn't to perfection, and uh, they didn't allow it to be any different from that. And if you didn't do it right the first time, you'd do it again and again and again until it was perfect by their standards and uh they were just great people great mentors and uh, a true blessing to have in my life no doubt i mean it's so important that we have those mentors that help guide us in our career path and, and that we can trust right and, and we know that right they actually care about us uh, as individuals and so thank you for giving those uh those shout outs to those three you know uh, it sounded like a couple had passed but you, no doubt they had a wonderful impact on your life and um you know tim we're we're in a tough time in manufacturing and industry right now. Things are changing a lot. There are a lot of challenges in front of us moving forward. What are you seeing at Century as some of the greatest challenges coming in the future? Well, I would say, you know, the employees finding people that are willing to work the hours and willing to put in their time to be good employees. Coming in here, you know, we have a lot of people that come in here for six months and you know they don't you know they don't like the amount of hours they work or they just they don't have any ambition or any drive to uh, prove something and uh it's a different than the way it was 20 years ago you know when when i started working you know it, you fought for those positions and you not not actually physically or anything like that but you know you wanted to stand out you had something to prove you want to get as much work as you you could get done in a day. And it was a sense of pride and, you know, something you've accomplished. You felt good at the end of the day. And I don't see that as much as I used to. And that, that scares me that, you know, we need those kind of people to move the company forward. And when we re- decide to retire, you know, we got a core of people here now that been here 25 to 35 years. And that group of people is, is growing older and some have, passed on some have left and uh i just want to replenish that group of people and it's just hard to find anymore so i think that's my biggest challenge at this point encourage folks to take on responsibility and lead and yeah i don't see that anymore they'd rather be like workers and um put in their time and go home it's it's not like you know not that everybody's built for that but it's just motivation and and desire to do better. I just that's what we need at this company. Well, it's something. I mean, we're hear, we're hearing that Tim across the board. There's a skill set gap, first of all, in just skilled labor. But then you touched on another point component of that skilled labor, and that's the leadership and the drive. And it is hard to find, and that's what we're trying to inspire for others to consider this industry because it can be very fulfilling work. It has a lot of purpose, and just trying to connect those dots. I'm feeling your your struggle there, but you know I don't have all the answers. But conversations like this at least bring awareness and can hopefully uh, maybe your your next top level uh, leader is listening to this right now and wants to come talk to you. You know, right? 
if if somebody was considering this the industry you're in right now, Tim, and you you got a ton of experience in it, what advice would you give them? To treat people consistently, fairly, help people pursue their goals. Don't give up on employees. You know, we we have a lot of that that come through here. That we're different than most companies. Somebody comes in here and they have something going on personal in their life and they're not acting the way they should or their attendance is, is falling and uh, they're not as productive as they should. I have a conversation with those people and ask them what's going on. How can I help them? How can I improve what they're going through? To me, that generates a relationship with those employees that you know that you do care for them. You want them to be successful. And at the end of the day, you know, regardless of whether they stay or they don't, they always tend to come back to Century because of that uh, relationship. You know, they go up somewhere else. They're a number. Managers and, and people in, a, in higher positions doesn't give them credit. You know, they just they have to do a job. And I don't believe in that. It's not been my approach since I was a kid. I really didn't know what that approach was back then, but... It's helped this company, I think, throughout the years here. It's just rewarding for those folks to stay. You keep them here. You work through their difficulties. At the end of the day, once they get through that difficulty, they know what you went through with them, and they're more willing to do their job and do a better job because of the way you treat them. Right. You know, Tim, to me, what you're speaking to right there is has a lot to do with just company culture, and you've, you've built a wonderful culture there. I'm just curious, from a personal standpoint, has the culture always been that way at Century? I uh, it sure has. the The owner, he was uh, a family type person that you know he treated us all. You know he expected a lot out of us, but at the end of the day, you knew that he was a good man and that he was going to do what he could for you. And so I've learned most of my knowledge from Adam Vanosky, and uh, he's really really been a mentor to me to help me. But it's got to be inside of you, too, to have that kindness and emotional attachment to these folks. And, yeah. Uh, you, you can't fake that, can you, Tim? No. No, sir. You cannot. They see, they'll read right through it, you know. they. That's right. You know, if you're not genuine and honest, it, it doesn't mean anything to anybody. And, you, th- you know, through my career, I've had the, the pleasure of, of just traveling – Primarily the Southeast, Tim, but uh, to so many different manufacturing facilities and utilities and pulp and paper, things like that. And you you can feel it when you're in certain environments where the culture is like you're talking about. And you can feel the opposite as well. And it's usually that's for, you know, a lot of high, high turnover and things like that. So hats off to you guys for recognizing the importance of, of relationships and building a positive work culture because... That's why, you know, the people that have left probably have come back to you. you know, so it's, you, you you have something special there. So, you know, just want to recognize that. And Tim, I do have a question for you about people who may be considering coming to industry. And there are a lot of common myths out there. People think about industry, they think about something pops in their head, whatever that visual image is, right? I'd like for you to to debunk that. You know, if there's something out there that you think, hey, I know people think this is what industry is about, but here's reality. Uh, what would that be, Tim? Well, Century is more than a conveyor company. You know, we provide many different products. We, we provide depalletizers, palletizers, basket equipment erectors, robotic applications, case pallet washers, just a variety of equipment we offer. And like I say, throughout my career, this product line has grown from conveyor to all these different product lines, we've developed many different avenues to provide to our customers. And that's pretty much what I'd like to debunk is we're just not a conveyor company. To me, that says you're flexible. You recognize changing market trends. And when you, when you, yeah. when you see those changes, you guys are developing solutions to address that yeah. need. So, and I think so much of industry out there is that way. It's some people think, well, if I just go to this, manufacturing facility i'm gonna be doing the same thing for the next 20 years wrong that's that's not the oh. case you know there's so much changes from you may not be doing the same thing in, you know, every three months i mean it could change that quickly so i think it's yeah while you may be in a same you know facility or building or area 
what you're doing in that is going to change so much as the market changes. So thank you for sharing that information there, Tim. And when you think about the future and you think about projects, what gets you pumped up? What gets you excited? Robotics right now is what we really have uh, tried to achieve the last year and a half, gathering folks that are have been in the business a while and attracting those folks to Century and getting sales, creating sales in that area. We've managed to do so, so far. It's it's something that we think that's necessary to, like you said, grow the company and keep up with technology. So it looks like we got a pretty good handle on things right now, and uh, it sure is promising to see the impact it's having on the company uh, and the employees here. You know, they, they've they gotten excited about it, and everybody's on board. And So how and, uh, are you guys going it, about learning with that? So if, if robotics is a new space for your company how are you learning and and adapting this technology well we've had a a sister company that thought it in that field and um you know we explored that and helped with that and they've educated us to a degree on some of that and uh that's a you know aging work environment at that location so we uh wanted to make sure that we was up to speed so they have supported us to a degree we've actually hired a couple talented folk in the industry that have uh, really paid dividends to our company and and we've taken some of our resources that were already here and put with those actual people that we've hired and that's expanded. We reached out to a salesperson that's been in the business for 25 years that was available and uh, we attracted him to come to Century so this year is his very first year so we've got to see what how that goes, and at this point, it looks like it's going very well. So that's kind of how we've gotten started. We already had all the equipment here, manufactured equipment, to do this type of work, and we've built a relationship with a robotic company that actually manufactures the equipment, and uh, we buy the actual robot from them, and then we do all the inner bomb tooling attachments to whatever the customer specs are right. for whatever he's picking up or packaging or moving or pattern forming um we program and and get the job done that kind of way well it sounds like that's an exciting uh new venture for century so hats off to you and you'll have a lot of fun in that area for sure and uh you'll learn a lot and that type of technology is ever changing too so uh uh, be be ready to constantly be learning buddy oh yes sir (laughs) yeah we're looking forward to growing that side of it for sure. Well, that's wonderful. So, Tim, I've, I've asked this question a lot to guests over the past because it really helps our listeners understand, you know, what drives people. So, when you're finding yourself in that moment at work and you're you're doing the work you feel like you were meant to do, and you have a lot of purpose and you're getting a lot of joy and you're just feeling good, there's a lot of fulfillment. What are you typically doing in those moments? I like to, you know, and, and during my career, throughout my career, I've put in a lot of time and, you know, the, the enjoyment I get is satisfaction out of what I've accomplished during the day. And a lot of that was in my early in my career was actually building things and seeing how much I could get done. But over the years in the position in, uh, that I'm in now, it's helping employees and uh, working side by side with these guys and encouraging them and Kindness goes a long ways. It's really, over the years, I I learned that, that you can tell people and push people, but it really, the reaction you get is negative. You know, you ask people and you inspire people, and that goes a long way, and that that's what I enjoy the most. And uh, I love to promote people and see them grow you know, and provide a better lifestyle for their families. That's what I encourage, and yeah. and that's what brings me the most joy. Well, it sounds like you pour a lot of yourself into others, and that's a classic sign of a great servant leader. So hats off to you, Tim. And we love to take these hero episodes and, and conversations and give a little bit of the personal inside insight for our listeners. Uh, so could you talk to us maybe a little bit outside of work? So what do you enjoy doing? Any hobbies, anything like that you like to share? Well, fishing, you know, is, is my major hobby. I've been doing it. 
I well, since I was, you know, probably around five or six years old, I, my grandfather took me fishing. So I fell in love with it then. And, you know, I used to go with my grandfather. He would come pick me up out of school, let's go fishing. And, uh, you know, that over time I just grew from fishing in a John boat and to fishing tournaments. It was just a fun time. It's peaceful. You know, you're at nature. Uh, you got the sun rising and the geese flying over. It's just uh, a sense of peace, too, when you're up there. And uh, that's my major hobby. Okay, so is this primarily like freshwater fishing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bass fishing majority of the time. Okay. Now how about anything else uh, that you enjoy doing? Well, I golf on occasions. I'm not very good at it, but I, that's another way for me to get outside. And I've never been bitten by the golf bug. I, I don't understand <laughs> chasing the little white ball around cow pastures, but hey, whatever you guys <laughs> do, enjoy doing, do it, man. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like you got some fun things going on on the side. That, so, are you still doing tournaments, bass tournaments? or was... I, I do not do tournaments anymore. I, you know, when I get an opportunity, those opportunities have slowed down over my lifetime. And so now I go, you know, when I can and and, and go for just pure, you know, relaxation. Right. And, I remember I had a uh, – I used to work on a race car, and uh, one of the guys that – that was on the team and helped us. He was a, he was a bass fisherman and he would go to these tournaments and he, I, I always thought this was funny. So I got to ask you this question. So did you ever go practice fishing before tournaments? <laughs> I, I know that sounds funny, but actually, uh, I did several, several, several times. Uh, I guess you call it practice, but unless you're a serious fisherman, you don't, you understand why they you have to do that. Well, it's, uh, you know, I grew up playing baseball, so I get going to the batting cage and, you know, <laughs> catching grounders. When he told me practice, I'm like, bro, you're going fishing before you go fishing. So, like, he's like, no, but just practice. You, It's really, you got to understand where to go when they drop it. And they said it's, it's, the tournament starts, like, you don't want to be figuring that stuff out then. I'm like. You're still fishing, yeah. but anyway, I I got off us on a side road. Sorry about that. I was just curious if that was something you did. I did. I still do on it. It's more or less. It's called eliminating water. You know, you eliminate <laughs> right. right. You eliminating areas where the fish are not. That's so. right. Just know where they're not. I got you. Yeah. So you know, we we also love on these episodes, Tim, to talk a little bit about family. Anything you like to share with our listeners there? Well. I got a great wife, been a true blessing. Um, you know, she's a great person, and that's pretty much majority of my family. Early in my years and when I was a teenager, I lost the majority of my family to different things. And uh, so really didn't have a family. But the family that I do have is the people within the Century Organization, and, and I have some friends, and I consider all those folks my family. And, I, and it's a pretty large family that uh, I'm very blessed and, and lucky to have. So that's pretty much all I have is family. Well, hey, man, that, that's that's a ton. I mean, you know, it, it's so important. And when you find that, that right partner, it really makes such right. a difference in your life, doesn't it? Right. It sure did. Also, I, I'd love to just kind of understand, are there any books or anything that you enjoy reading that you like to share with people that maybe they should uh, look at or consider? Well, I've never been a huge reader or anything like that, but um, I, the only book that I really read is the Bible. That has helped me more than anything throughout my life. And, uh, you know, it's true. If you live your life by that, then... You shouldn't have any problems, and uh, that's pretty much the only book I've read. Well, hey man, that's uh, you could only kick, take one book on, you know, with you. I think you <laughs> pick you picked the right one. So hats off to you, and you know, thank you for sharing that and your truth you know, and just the honesty that you're you're sharing with our listeners. And Tim, we love to kind of wrap the podcast up and the episodes up with the why. Because we call it eco ask why, and we get down to the purpose and what drives people and what you know what what is their motivation. So, if you had to summarize what your purpose is, what your what your personal why is for Tim Woodson, what would that be? My personal life is caring. I never 
thought that was what I was about. But over the years, you know, I'm 55 years old, and at the end of the day, it's about people. And, you know, it's about understanding, caring, and just being willing to help, support, and and educate. You know, I've I've noticed the last few years I'm starting to do more of that than I ever have. And and when I mean educate, it's nothing from a book. It's it's nothing you can be taught. It's just life experiences and things that you know you've been through that you can help others go through those difficulties and with assurance that it's a, a brighter light at the end of the at the end of the road and uh so that that's what I pushes me to come in here every day is to provide a great place to work great benefits as much as the company can afford you know we're privately owned ESOP company and um we all own it, and we, we provide a good benefit package that they can go home and their kids and wife can count on it. And uh, they know that every day they come in here, they have somewhere to go. They got people to talk to. And people people that want them to be here and want them to be successful. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what I would like to be remembered for is, is how I treated them. And when... And I could and that I could lay down at night and sleep well and know that I've done everything I could possibly do as a leader of this company and um uh, that that God would bless us and um uh, keep us healthy. I I'm with you. I, I completely I love your answer. I, I know our listeners will hear your passion and and this that was from the heart. That was probably one of the more from the heart answers that we've heard through the podcast and I mean you, you have that that caring heart it's it's part of who you are you're always trying to pour into others to make others better uh and, and that's why you've had the success you've had over your life and you, you, you've been blessed uh, but you've also turned that blessing into a blessing for others and uh that 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 means so much so I I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation you've inspired me and I, I know you've inspired our listeners as well uh to Always keep moving forward, care for others, uh, be that servant leader. And when, when you do those things and you truly think about other people, doors have a way of opening, don't they, my friend? Yes, sir. Yeah, I never dreamed I would have this position. It's it's a lot of probably more people out there more qualified than myself, for sure. Well, Tim, this is this has been an absolute pleasure on for for Eco, and and we thank you for taking the time on Eco Ask Why and this conversation. So, uh, I hope you have a blessed day. You too, brother. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.